Hello, and welcome to the Grove Church Podcast. I'm Charlie Lofton, the lead pastor there, and we are so glad that you're joining us. Whether you are a member and you're just catching up on a sermon that you missed, or you're someone who's brand new, we are really glad that you are joining us. And if you are new in some way, and I know that a lot of people will do that, will listen to sermons first before they visit, I want you to know that we would love to meet you at any point. You can join us live in our services on Sunday, 9 and 1030, or our streaming service at 1030. Either way, we would love to be able to get to know you. And regardless of why you are here uh, listening to this sermon today, thank you so much for joining us. Hey, good morning. morning. And happy Easter to everybody. Really glad that you are here. Uh, Especially if you're new, I'm Charlie, uh, the lead pastor here, and really glad all of you are here. If this is your first time, it's your 500th time, we're really glad that all of you are here worshiping with us. And I know we have a lot of moms and dads and grandmas and grandpas here today that are visiting family. We're really glad that you guys are also here. And I'm not, I mean, I'm not a grandpa, but having now, having adult daughters, I do understand just kind of how awesome it is, you know, to have on holiday weekends like this to be able to celebrate and be with your uh, be with your family. And we, uh, our adult daughters, Maylee and Lauren, 25 and 22, they were with us um, all day yesterday, with us today. It was a great time, and we did a lot of fun things, the five of us, my wife Heidi and our youngest daughter, Layla, and we were all hanging out, and I, had, I knew all these stories individually, but it wasn't until yesterday that I connected that all three, my, my, my two oldest daughters and my wife Heidi, have all had difficult um, uh, flight experiences over the last few weeks, and these stories started to pop up. Start, my, my, my oldest daughter, Maylee, uh, she went to Los Angeles with a friend uh, uh, over spring break, and she had the middle seat, and no one can tell a story like Maylee can, but basically she made a new friend. Now she had her friend on one side, and she made a new friend over here who was just really interested in kind of being here next to Maylee or, or whatever. You know, she's just, you know, she's, she's getting heated. And then it kind of launches into a discussion just about discount airlines in general. And um, we are a very pro-discount airlines family. Uh, until recently, I guess, some of us are starting to, to waver. But then my wife says, hey, it's not just, it's not just discount airlines, because she was on a business trip, and she flew in from Dallas, supposed to fly in from Dallas X&A a few weeks ago, and it was during one of the just kind of the big wind thunderstorms kind of things that was going on, and it was, first flight got canceled, they put on a later flight, it's supposed to be okay, then it's delayed. And they went anyway, thinking everything was fine, but it was not fine. And she'll just describe this as one of the scariest moments of her life and just how dangerous it was. It's not just normal turbulence. She said it felt like a giant had grabbed the plane and was just kind of throwing it around. And she was really shaken. But finally, after what seemed like forever, they land. The pilot gets on there and is like, "Uh, well, uh, welcome to Fayetteville and XNA. And and then the businessman next to her says, "Uh, uh, this is not XNA. He pulls out her phone. They are in Springfield, Missouri. <laughs> so, I mean, the pilot didn't tell anybody. I mean, he didn't even tell the rest of the crew. They, they landed, and the, and, the, and the stewardess just assumed, okay, flight attendants were like, I guess, I guess we're, of course we're an X and A. Where else would this plane be going? Except, they went, oh, Springfield, Missouri. Thankfully, even though it was really late at night, uh, my folks live in Branson, were able to go get her, and it was, you know, it worked out, it worked out okay. And then my, my, my middle daughter, Lauren, she was going to New Orleans with some friends. And um, she's having this, she's having difficulty, again, another really windy day, right? And so when, okay, it's, you know, it's going to be delayed a little bit, and they finally let them board. It's going to be delayed a bit longer, an hour, two hours. And now they start taxiing, and now they're kind of, okay, okay we're finally making progress. And then... Due to union regulations, the staff has already been working longer than they need to, so we will be taxiing back to the gate because we do not have a crew. We'll try to find another crew for you. And and all of a sudden, hours wasted. And now, because of this, now that they come back and the flight gets completely uh, postponed until the very next day, right? And you just think these kind of situations, just how frustrating they are, right? Like, I've got this idea here I am, and especially at the, like at the beginning of your journey, right? I'm trying, and, and, and there's this place that I want to go. And suddenly there are all these circumstances around that's like that are completely beyond my control. And, 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 and now I'm not being able to go where I want to go. Or my wife, she's trying to get home. She's trying to get home. 
and everything is just battering her around. And after all of the, just the, the beat down, you end up someplace you never intended to go in the first place. Now, I don't want to be that guy that just kind of keeps bringing, up, bringing, up this, bringing it up again. But I just, I, just, I just feel like it's real. Right? These last three years have just been rough. And it was completely out of the blue, completely unexpected. It's kind of beating us around and we've kind of ended up in places that we didn't need to be. And it's like, I, I would love to not bring it up, except social media is the worst, right? Facebook, Instagram, Snapchat does what it is. It's like, hey, do you remember this from three years ago? Yes, I remember that from three years ago. It's a picture of me preaching to an empty room. <laughs> I remember. You have to remind me. But I mean, I think if we were honest, certainly about how we felt then, beaten, or beaten up, thrown around, delayed, like a giant grabbed us and threw us someplace, and we landed someplace we never wanted to go. And, and, the, and the reality of it is, there's so many of us, we're just kind of shaken. And we've been going over the last three weeks, we've been going through the book of Hebrews, and, and we've been talking about this idea of a better hope. That we put our hope in a lot of different things. We put our hope in, a, in systems that, that we think that are going to work, uh, a, a nation, a political party, a, a job, a life that we've created. We put our hope in a lot of different things, and then life beats us and, 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 and beats us around, and we find ourselves bruised and tired and overwhelmed. And we put, we had, maybe at one time, some of us, we kind of put our, our faith and hope in God, and then life just kind of makes us drift, which is the people that, that the author of Hebrews is talking to. They're the people who had a, a real faith in Jesus. They put their hope in God and, and, they, and, they, and they desperately, they wanted to follow him. And then life starts to kind of beat them around a little bit. And what do they do? They start to slowly drift back to what they were before. And what were they before? They were really kind of, they followed kind of a religion that was very self-reliant. I've got to be good enough. I've got to work hard. I've got to do all the right things. And they begin to forget about the great, awesome things that Jesus Christ had done for them. And they start kind of drifting back into this sense of self-reliance. If it's going to happen, it's going to be because I did it. I've, I've got to make it happen. And I really do feel like, in a lot of ways, that is a lot of us. That at one point in our life, we would have said that, that, that Jesus and, and our faith was, was kind of central to who we were. And life has hit us in such a way where we drift. And, and spiritually, personally, we're now, it's, 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 what's, it's up to me. I, I've got to do this. And so we find ourselves uh, kind of working our way through this book. In Hebrews chapter 12, starting in verse 1, and in Hebrews chapter 11, he's just describing a lot of different Bible characters and people who accomplished a lot of great things and went through a lot of difficult circumstances, but in one, one way or another saw God kind of show up really big, and they showed a lot of incredible faith. And describing that um, here in Hebrews 12, verse 1, he says, Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses... Let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles. And let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us, fixing our eyes on Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of faith. For the joy set before him, he endured the cross, scorning its shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Consider him who endured such opposition from sinners, so that you will not grow weary and lose heart. So guys, we've got all these incredible examples. This is what he's telling. We've got all these great examples. And you know them. You know all these examples, all these great stories from the Old Testament of all these people who, who saw God do all these incredible things. And, and therefore, since we've got all of that, here's what you need to do. Throw off all this other stuff. And run, run this race that God has called us to with endurance. Throw off all these things that are holding you back. Put your eyes on Jesus and, and, and move forward. 
I believe is kind of a, kind of like this sum up of kind of what he's been talking about for chapter after chapter. It's like, I, I know, I, he's like, I know, I know all these things have happened. I know this is where you are. And just a really inspirational moment of like, your life, it can get back, you can, you can get back right. And so I think this kind of breaks down the kind of three, three real easy parts for us to kind of really help us. Like, if I'm going to kind of just get out of this and get my life back with its proper focus on who God is and who God is calling me to be, we start here at this very beginning this, in verse 1, this big encouragement that he gives. Let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us. So the first thing, I'm, I, I just want to encourage you. Let's run. Let's run. We've been, we've like, we've been stuck in mud. We've been stuck in mud for so long. We're just kind of, it feels kind of stuck. I feel kind of slow. And I, and, and over and over again, the more and more people I talk to, people just kind of describe themselves this way. Sludge, slow, hindered, you know, like, like, like I'm, like I'm carrying around a bag of rocks. I mean, just all these kind of things. And he's like, this is what he's saying to them. It's like, let's, let's forget about that. Let's run. And then he says, here's how you do it. You've got all these things holding you back. You've got, you've got every, all these things that hinder, all these things that hinder and sin that so entangles. He's just throw that, throw that off so you can run. And I, I don't, I don't know what you're like. I don't know if your brain ever gets conspiratorial. But I really do. I, sometimes I feel like that there's some secret force out in the world that's just out to frustrate me. And you think I'm about to say something really significant, and I'm not. You're going to judge me when I when I talk about this. But this it's a little thing, but it, it just it agitates me in a way that it shouldn't, right? So I, you know, you, you kind of got kind of got belt loops, right? And you're just walking around, and you're minding your own business, and then there's just something in the wall or a door or door handle, or something just kind of hooks you, and you're walking like, yeah, and you're like. How? And I'm always wearing athletic shorts, except today, just nice. I would never, not on Sunday, not yet, maybe someday. <laughs> anyway, and, and a lot of times those pockets are kind of, kind of more vertical like this. I'm telling you, those things get hooked all the time. Like there's some gremlin out there just kind of hanging out on, on my pocket, go, hee <laughs> like the hook. Because here's what I'll do. Here's what I'll do. It's like, there's no way you could do this on purpose. So I'll poke it out, and I'll try to walk past and see if I can hook myself on purpose, which I can't. And I just get so First, I don't know why it frustrates me so much. But another thing I seem to be a magnet for, and I'm spider webs, right? We can be on, we can be on a hike. We can be on the back porch. It doesn't matter. All of a sudden, you're just kind of walking. I was like, oh, and, and then it's just all over you. And you know, you know what I'm like? Maybe you're not a magnet for them. Maybe you don't have a gremlin who's throwing spider webs and hooking your pants to doorknobs. But then like, you think you get it off, and you're like, okay, I think I'm fine. Like, where does it, where's it keeps coming from? It's like, it just, it just overwhelms and entangles you. And this is one of the reasons, honestly, like I, people are like, oh man, you're getting old now, you're wearing glasses. I love wearing glasses because I'm like, I got an eye thing. It keeps, keeps stuff out of my eye, it sticks out of my eye, spider webs out of my eye, right? You're trying to go somewhere. And see, I think I'm, I'm trying to go somewhere. And ne- next thing I know, I got something that's kind of hooked me. I can't, I can't go where I want to go. Or I'm, or I'm trying to go somewhere, trying to go on this hike. Next thing I know, I'm just all up in, just kind of all entangled in all this, this grossness that I just can't seem, I can't seem to get it off me. And what he says, like, there's a lot of that in life. You've got these things, these things that are making you stumble, that are hindering, that are kind of slowing you down. Things you don't have any control over. This is kind of, just kind of life events. And he says also, but then there's also the sin that entangles you. And some of us, is like we think about kind of where I am versus where I wish I were. Where I am versus where I thought I would be. Sometimes it's just these obstacles, these hindrances that just kind of seem to hook you. There really wasn't anything that I could do about it. It's just it, life happened to me. But sometimes it's also the choices that we've made. The, the bad things we have done, the sins that we have committed, the thing that I did a week ago, a month ago, a year ago, three years ago, or whatever, and it just seems like no matter what, no matter what happens in my life, I just can't seem to get it all off. I still, I still, I still feel it. I still feel it. It's still holding me back. 
And I, and I, don't, I don't know what it is for you. I don't know if you really do identify with the fact that the last, you know, I don't know if you would say it feels true to you, right? That the last three years have been overwhelming. Maybe it's not that. Maybe it's something else. Maybe it's someone that has hurt you. Maybe an unexpected tragedy of some sort or a a, a job transition of some kind. Any number of things where life just kind of hits you. Or maybe you think about the thing that really that's holding me back. I'm just going to be honest, it's me. I'm holding me back because of what I've done and often what I'm still doing. Like I'm holding, it's it's what I've done. And what does the author say? What he says is, very simple, well, just throw it off. Which that's, that's 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 like great advice, right? This, 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 this is the advice we're going to Hey, guess what? You got all these bad things in your life, things that are holding you back, things you don't like. You know what you do? Well, just don't. Just throw them off. All right? That's great advice. This is all, that's all you need. Hey, those things, those bad things, just don't. Let's pray. Right? <laughs> it's like uh, we, do, we do this sometimes, though, right? Somebody's struggling with anxiety or fear. It's like, well, have you tried not being anxious? Oh, thanks. <laughs> If it were that easy, if it were that easy, we would all have already done it. And this is not just some simple self-help, pull yourself up, you can do it kind of thing. Because he says, you run, you throw this off, run with perseverance. And then he tells us how. Verse 2, fixing our eyes on Jesus. So if we're going to run, if we're going to get out of the sludge, if we're going to really legitimately be able to throw off the things that are hindering us, we're going to have to fix our eyes on Jesus. And the way that he describes it, he he is the pioneer, the perfecter of faith, because the joy set before him, he endured the cross, scorning its shame, sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Consider him who endured such opposition from sinners. And on a first kind of casual read, what you might hear him say, hey, put your eyes on Jesus. Because if you think about Jesus and what he had to go through, you can be inspired to go through what you have to go through. Some sort of, like he is a great moral example. You're going through some tough stuff. You know who else went through some tough stuff? Jesus did. You're going through a bad time. He went through a bad time. And his bad time was really bad. Like he was being mocked by people. He suffered a torturous death. And if you'll just like, if you'll, you'll look at him and look at his example, then you maybe you can get the courage to do it too. But I want to encourage, even though that might be kind of at first glance, kind of what that se- the impression that seems to give, that is not what the author here is talking about. Because actually that sort of attitude is what he has been talking against the whole book. This sort of attitude that if you just kind of get your mind right, take a few deep breaths and work real hard, then you can, you can do it. Just think about Jesus and you can do it. There is no you can do it in the theology and the understanding of this author. And the way that he described Jesus, I think helps us understand that. It says, fix your eyes on Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of faith. The pioneer and the perfecter of your faith, right? Your faith, our faith, the perfecter. So the pioneer of faith, what does that mean? A pioneer goes to some place where there's nothing and makes something. So if he is the pioneer of faith, he is the one that took the initiative. He is the one that made this happen. He is the one that came to you to create something inside of you. He is the one that came to where there was nothing and made the something. He's the one that started it, but he's not just the pioneer. He is the perfecter of your faith. Like my faith feels imperfect. My my faith feels incomplete. My faith feels inadequate. I feel like I'm pulling away. How do I come back? Well, the perfecter of your faith does that. This is not something that you just decide to do. This is something that Jesus is going to do for you, but we have to fix our eyes on him. We have to stop living a self-reliant, I can do it, I'm in charge, I, I, I can make myself better, works kind of driven life and mentality. But instead, I put my eyes, my heart, my focus on Jesus, who 
for the joy set before him endured the cross. Now you take 2,000 years of Christian theology or just whatever your personal experience is with Christian understanding and who Jesus is, what a strange phrase that would be. Because of the joy that he had, he endured a torturous execution. But it was joyful for him. There was a joy in it for him. There was a joy. There was something that was going to be there for him. He scorned its shame. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm a, oh, you think I'm a criminal. You think I'm a heretic. I, 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 I reject all of that because there is this joy for me. So he dies on the cross because it is going to bring him joy. And what is that joy? You are that joy. Because he saw a group of people that were there then, and he saw us now, all of us entangled in our sin, all of us hindered by burdens, all of us trying to throw it off ourselves. He says, but I'm going to die for them and bring them life. And that was the joy he had. And I want to make sure, we got some people here again who, who are brand new to our church, maybe just brand new to church in general. And I want to make sure we're completely clear on what we're talking about here. Because this idea is, is central to what Jesus did and central to why we are celebrating this weekend. Because he saw us, he saw us in our, the hindrances, he saw us entangled. And the real core issue here is our sin, the things that we have done, our rebellion against God, our moving away from what God had designed us for. The things that we experience out there in the world are just the symptoms of that. The reality is we created this collectively together by our sin. And there is no, hey, let's just kind of put our heads together and if we work real hard and we try and we decide to unify, we can fix this problem. Because the problem is our sin and how it has separated us from God. And Jesus saw that and he said, the only way, the only way that they can have life is if I will die and I I will take this burden on myself. I will take the punishment for them so that they can be free. And so my hope, our prayer, our desire, if this is new to you, that your sins can be forgiven, that you can be released from the burdens that you have by putting your faith fully, by fixing your eyes truly on Jesus Christ. Our hope and our prayer is that you will experience that today. Because he died so that you could have life. It was a joy that was set before him. And then in verse 3 it says, Consider him who endured such opposition from sinners so that you will not grow weary and lose heart. So let's run, fixing our eyes on Jesus so you won't lose heart. There's so much that can feel like we're losing heart. That that, that, that just can feel discouraging. But you know how you can know that you do not have to lose heart? It says it right here. He endured the cross, scorning his shame, and sat down at the right hand. He sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. He did not simply die a religious martyr, and then his movement and his thoughts and his ideas were carried on. He died and he came back to life. He came back to life to make sure that everyone legitimately knew. I mean, you can say, I am the conqueror of sin and death. You can say, because of what I'm doing, you can know that death is not the end. You can say that. He demonstrated it. He showed them that death was not the end. He came back to life and he talked to them. And he said, this is what I've been talking about. Now you can know that you can have life in me. And then they saw him leave, and now he sits, it says here, at the right hand, a seat of power next to the throne of God the Father. And if he is sitting there in that seat of power, and I have my eyes fixed on him, I know he is still intervening for me. He is still wanting to encourage me, to strengthen me, to help me, to 
be the perfecter of my faith. He sits in a position of power and influence still for you. And in addition to that, I know because of where he is and because of his very words, he says he is preparing a place for me there. So while I'm in a world that continues to be broken and unsettling, I can have hope when I fix my eyes on him because he sits at this right hand of God the Father interceding and advocating for me. And even if this world never gets any better, even if it only ever gets worse, I know that he is perfecting me and my faith and he is preparing a place for me. A perfect home with him forever. I'm not the one that's throwing them off. If I could have thrown off my hindrances and my entanglements, I would have done it. It is what Jesus does for us when we fully put our heart, our eyes on him. And so again, our hope is if this is new to you, that this will be something that becomes real to you. And if it is, if it's new for you and this is something that you want, please let us know. There's a card you can fill out and just come talk to one of us. We would love to hear your story. And our hope too is for those of us who have been in that place before where I have put my eyes on Jesus, but I find myself here that this will be a time of great spiritual renewal for us. And so as such, as we're going to spend some time, we're going to spend some time worshiping. I hope that whether you're sitting, whether you're standing, head up, head down, eyes open, eyes closed, that you will, you will, you will reflect and, and meditate and worship and pray and connect, reconnect with God through Jesus Christ, putting your heart and your focus on Him. And as always, we have places to respond in the back. We have communion available in the back. You do not have to be a member here to participate in that. If you are a follower of Jesus Christ, I encourage you. It is there in the back. We've got a place at the cross where you can pray. We've got a set of prayer candles where you can pray. There's people back there who would love to pray with you if you need that. But we really want this time to be a time of real personal reflection, a personal refocusing where I'm gonna take my eyes off all the obstacles. I'm gonna take all the eyes off of my own hindrances and entanglements and fix our eyes on Jesus so that we can run and not lose heart. Let me pray. Thanks again for joining us on our sermon podcast. And you can learn more about us at thegrovechurch.org. And if you go to thegrovechurch.org slash connect, there's a form you could fill out. Just let us know that you've been listening. And if you want to dig deeper on some of these topics that we cover in our sermon podcast or just in other issues of dealing with culture or theology, those kinds of things, uh, you can check out our Cultivate podcast, which is on the same feed, um, however you found this particular podcast. So again, this is Charlie, the lead pastor at The Grove, and thank you so much for joining us.